Okay, I wanted to graph some rational functions. Now you can tell if a function is a rational function or not because there will be variables down in the denominator. If there is a variable down in the denominator, you have a rational function. Now, what rational functions may have besides your typical uh, x-intercepts or roots, uh, also your ti-83 calls those zeros, besides your zero spots or your y-intercepts, and your maximums, you may have maximums or whatever, but besides those, the two key things that you can get off of, um, off of rational functions are horizontal and vertical asymptotes. And you may also have an oblique asymptote, to tell you the truth. So we, we're really interested in these, this topic of asymptote. Now what an asymptote is, is uh, a line that the graph gets closer and closer to, a spot, let's say, or a uh, vertical line or a horizontal line or an oblique line that the graph gets closer and closer to and never hits. Uh, one good description of that is, let's say uh, every two seconds, this hand here that's on the screen goes halfway the distance that it has left to go to the other side of the screen. Okay, every two seconds, it goes half the distance that it has left to go across the screen. So I'll start right here, and in two seconds, I get to go halfway across. Now, another two seconds go by, and I get to go half the distance I have left to go across the screen. So that would take me to about here. Then the next two seconds go by, and I get to go half the distance I have left to go across the screen. So that would take me to about here. Then the next two seconds, half the distance here, then half the distance here, and then half the distance here. And the truth is, is that this hand would never make it to the other side of the screen. You keep going half the distance you have left to take. So you never make it to the other side of the screen. This vertical line then, this screen, this right side of the screen would be the vertical asymptote. And if you graph this over time, what you would see if, if the x-axis was time and the uh, y-axis was uh, the distance that you traveled, well, you never make it clear across to the other side. Actually, it would be a horizontal asymptote in terms of the graph because as time goes on, you never make it all the way across. So um, um, we'll, we'll go with that idea. And let's go ahead and, and get into an example. This is a rational function. And uh, this problem asks some typical things to begin with. Uh, what's the concentration at t equals 0? So you could just plug 0 in for t. It also asks certain things like um, what, uh, when will the concentration of medication be 0? Well, to find out when the concentration of medication is 0, I could plug 0 in to the left-hand side. 0 equals this. Now, when is 0 going to equal this function here on the right-hand side? When the numerator equals 0. So you could just set the numerator equal to 0 to get your 0 spots or, or roots. So to find your roots, just set the numerator equal to 0. If you set 3t minus 1 equal to 0, you'll get 3t equals 1 or t equals 1 third or 0.333. So in 0.333 of a second, uh, that's when the concentration is 0. Also, some typical questions like new, uh, uh, find out the maximum level of concentration. Well, to find a maximum on this function, you cannot use the maxmin program because that's for polynomial type equations, quadratic, cubic, fourth power. So on this, the only way to get the maximum is to graph it. So um, what I did is I typed the equation into the y equals. Here it is. Remember to put parentheses around the numerator and denominator, like I did. And then what we could do is graph it. And since we really don't know how large this is, you, you could first maybe graph it on the standard viewing window by doing zoom 6 for standard. And you see that it's a pretty tight graph. We could look at the table menu. And uh, let me set my table a second. Start at, let's say, 0. And let's go out to about 10 units or so. Say the pitch is 1, 0 going pitch of 1. And let's table this just to get an idea of how large this is. And we can see that the values aren't very large at all on this. So if I go one unit high on my window, on my Y max, that's plenty high enough. So let me set my viewing window. And I'll set my Y max to be 1. And let's say my Y min also to be uh, negative 
1, and we'll leave the x's uh, be what they are. Y is the concentration, and it doesn't seem to go above 1. In fact, it stays uh, down there around point, uh, 3, point 0.3, something like that, and the x's are my time. Now let's graph, and we'll get a much better graph. So there's a graph of this function. And now if you want to find the maximum, we could do second trace, choose maximum choice 4, and then be to the left of the max, then arrow over until we're to the right of the maximum, which we are now, and then hit enter again, and we'll get the maximum to be when x is 1.949 and the maximum concentration is 0.3847. So, uh, and we have this answer right here. Okay, there we go. Now, what we're interested in, though, more than these things that we found before, are horizontal asymptotes on this problem. We might want to know what does um, the table, what does uh, the concentration level off to or approach after many many uh, months or, or whatever time is measured in here. Let's see real quick. Let's see. T is minutes after. So after many, many minutes, what is going on with the concentration? The Y is the concentration, the X is the time. So as time goes on, and really this is about the only part of the graph that makes sense is this this quadrant here this doesn't make sense this is negative time but as time goes on what's happened to the concentration well it's coming down well, let's see we could zoom out and see if the concentration you know keeps on going down goes negative let's do that a second and zoom out three for zoom out and we'll just zoom out here that's fine and, and if we look at this graph we can barely see it but it's a very flat line well, it looks like it, the graph is getting closer and closer to the x-axis, but a nice way to determine that is to make a table of values and put large values into the table to see if the, if the uh, concentration is approaching zero. So I'm going to go to my table set, second window, and the important thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the independent variable to ask so I can put in any values I want. Now I'll go to second graph, to make a table and I'm going to put in the values that I want to put in any values I want let me scroll down and you can see that the table I had for people to make are, are larger and larger values so like for example if we put in 10 what's the concentration in 10 minutes well it's 0.14146 what's the concentration in 100 minutes 0 0.014 and we could go out here let's say 10,000 minutes And in 10,000 minutes, the concentration is 1.5 e negative 4. What does that mean? That means 1.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. In other words, move your decimal point four places to the left, and you get 0 0.00015. So it's getting closer and closer to uh, zero here, this uh, concentration. Okay? And if you put in 100,000 or a million, you would see that this scientific notation number, uh, the, the e to the negative it gets a larger negative exponent here, which means move your decimal point farther and farther to the left, making this a number closer and closer to zero. So this does have a horizontal asymptote, and it is on the x-axis a height of zero. And that's a good way of finding horizontal asymptotes, actually, is to put large numbers into the function and see what it levels off to. There's other ways also of finding horizontal asymptotes that I'll get into on the next section.